for each of these platforms because cost is too high. Um, maintenance is a pain. Maintenance is a pain. And it's just a bad strategy uh, in the long run. I mean, I think we all know or we all can agree on what happened with the web, and the web is kind of one for most apps over the desktop, and there's no reason why the same thing will happen for mobile. So um, that's, that's, our, that's our view of it anyway. So. Do you think that, uh, that 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 will happen? Is that um, do you think that that the future on these devices is our applications, or is it mobile web as as the browsers get a little bit better and and uh, you know and three G turns to four G and do you think it's the web, or do you think that there's that it is apps? I think there'll always be a place for apps, but not in the way we see them today. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be more of a niche thing versus an app for everything. Um, and the web will definitely be a bigger player on these devices because there's, I mean, there's, yeah, there's device, um, there's the browsers that are going to get better for sure. I mean, companies like Apple and Google are investing heavily in basically on the same platform, right, in WebKit, and um, that's only going to get better. Um, the devices are going to get faster. I mean, all these phones have gigahertz processors now. Mm-hmm. That's today, right? And that's not a year from now, two years from now. Yep. Uh, so all these web technologies are going to run that much faster. Um, all this HTML5 stuff with Canvas, uh, WebGL, like those technologies um, are going to improve. And yeah, it's just not going to be the same need to write Java or C, um, those sort of things. I also think that um, the, the boundary between native apps and web apps is going to start to blur, especially first on, on mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, you know, a few years ago, you didn't have access to your GPS location in your browser. But now it's stock on your desktop and your mobile. Yeah. Um, you know, moving forward at uh, Google I/O, Google announced that Android's going to have access to the accelerometer now in the stock browser. Yeah. So, you know, th- this general phone gap approach that we have of just exposing whatever the device APIs we can yeah. is going to be, I think, just stock in your mobile browser eventually. So hopefully, you won't even have to see a phone gap framework a couple yeah. years down the road. It'll just be write a web app and you'll have access to all this stuff anyways. Yeah, because already like an iPhone and Android anyways, you get geolocation, offline storage. Offline storage there. Five. I thought there was one more. But anyways, it's already starting to happen. Yeah. And one of the things we're doing with PhoneGap is we're trying to keep an eye on HTML5 and what the APIs are and try to implement the same one so that your PhoneGap code will also run in the browser yeah. as those APIs come online um, so that you're kind of future-proofing your application so if there is a point where you don't need PhoneGap in the future, you've already written your HTML and JavaScript, and then it'll run right in the browser. Um, so you don't have to worry about that either. Um, approach we, we advocate to our customers a lot, too, is build a mobile website first, because um, the browser component we use in PhoneGap is, is the same as the browser on the phone in many cases, not all cases. but um, So if you build your mobile website, and then you can augment your application by using the PhoneGap APIs to give you, you know, stuff that might not be available in the browser. Um, you know, there's still an issue of like presence in the marketplace, which there are monetization and, and those sorts of issues that people might want to still be in marketplaces for, and there's no reason not to be there. Um, but if you can achieve both the mobile web and an installable app from uh, one code base, then you're ahead of the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that that's the key is that uh, I, I do remember I was a part of whatever went down in the late 90s around the web. and. And all those, uh, uh, you know, you used to spend thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars to build a website ten years ago or twelve years ago um, for stuff that WordPress gives you for free today, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and for eighty bucks, you can get a pretty well-designed template that you can augment that would have cost you another thirty grand ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that we're seeing that right now in this industry, especially well, the mobile industry, is where, you know, you could spend eighty grand on on uh, an iPhone and a BlackBerry version. Uh, of, uh, of a mobile application, and for what? Right? Why, why do you need an app? Uh, you know, I, I ask that question a lot. Is it you, you probably don't? You, you you probably need a mobile website and leverage somebody else's app, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and but I mean, what are the what are your customers in Natobi coming to you? Is it mostly web stuff and, and extending that into the mobile world, or is it uh, is it really are they looking for apps? Uh, yeah, they're looking for a mobile solution, I guess. So apps and mobile websites. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times they come asking for an app, and we'll actually talk them into a mobile website, and then we'll do the app at the same time. So, uh, but there is still features definitely that you don't get in a mobile website. Yeah. You know, stuff like messaging, so you don't get like push notifications on websites. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so an offline is a big use case also. So being able to store a lot of assets offline um, is also another use case for the apps. Um, so yeah, I mean, you are, and still today, I guess you are a bit more um, sure of what the experience is going to be like when the app is bundled uh, in PhoneGap and you know exactly how it's going to run when it's installed on that device. So what, what, what have people been uh, saying about, you know, for example, I mean, how, how many apps have been launched uh, on, under PhoneGap? Do you, have, do you have that number or is it just because it's out there, you don't know? Yeah, that's, that's a big part of it is, yeah. you know, it's open source. I mean, how many downloads of PhoneGap do we yeah, know of at least? Yeah, we know that the framework's been downloaded um, just over 300,000 times. That's, that's incredible. Um, we do know, kind of unofficially, that there is about a thousand apps in the Apple App Store alone. Yeah. Um, you know, the mailing list is three thousand members strong, yeah. uh, and the community site gets about one hundred and thirty thousand unique visits um, a month. Yeah. So it's a pretty strong community. Uh, of course, we do, yeah because the code is distributed. You know, it's like on Google Code. It's on our website, and the main place for it. Um, Downloading and contributing back is on GitHub, yeah. which only well, it doesn't really give you good statistics, if any statistics at all, yeah. of how many times the code's been downloaded. So, yeah, but we know there's a lot of momentum around it. And is it? Um, I mean, what you've got a few that are listed, I think, on your website. Is there? What, what's the feedback been from from people who have implemented this in, uh, apps on this development environment? Well, it really ranges, yeah, because we're because we're hitting web developers. It's a huge cross section of developers. Yeah. I mean, you have um, people who are brand new to programming, and then you have also some of the most talented software engineers uh, in the world today doing web development. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, the feedback ranges from, "Oh my God, this is amazing! This is saving my, you know, project, and I can develop so much quicker." To, "Why doesn't this, you know, build my application for me?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's too complicated, or can I put my PHP site on it? Yeah, yeah all like that. that kind of ranges. Yeah. Um, seems in the open source world, no matter how much you do, people always want more. Well, it's, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> free is not good enough, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you balance? How do you balance phone gap requirements with what you're doing with your for-profit business? Right? Uh, you know, do you? Do you have a team that, that is focused on on uh, on phone gap or is it just kind of um, as things are released and um, as things are exposed you just build it in like, yeah it's a bit of both I mean the team that works on phone gap is also the team that works on all our client projects so um, we kind of it's kind of distributed amongst the team so like Phil is kind of one of the main blackberry um, developers and maintainers who's in most of that for phone gap and a couple of the guys do iPhone one guy does Android. Um, another fellow does the uh, Nokia and, and Palm stuff, and so it kind of it kind of goes in waves, I guess. So there'll be big pushes sometimes, um, and then client projects a lot of the time drive innovation in the in the uh, project too. Um, you know, whether we need to implement a feature for for a specific app, or sometimes clients who are using PhoneGap as a framework will hire us to extend the framework. Yeah. A lot of the XMPP support we've built in recently as plugins has come from uh, one client in particular funding just us to build that for them so that they can use it in their application. So why, I mean, if you were, if you were to just kind of look at this and say, um, why, why has this been become so popular uh, in the development community or, or the, you know, in the HTML and JavaScript community? Um, is it because of two things? I'm going to maybe ask two parts of this question. Is it because that there's a, a serious demand out there for um, for web apps, or, or I mean, sorry, mobile applications, and guys who are who have typically done web development inside of an organization are being asked to do that, and they're trying to find some kind of solution so they don't have to go back to school to learn Objective C, or or is it is it much more that that you know, it's an independent guy sitting at home. I interviewed this uh, Jordan Bush who does taxi yeah, meetings. Yeah. yeah, and he, he he used you guys, and he did a you know a survey of a bunch of of similar uh, you know maybe not similar, but uh, certainly app development third party development environments, and uh, he chose you guys. But is that your target, or does it matter really? 
doesn't matter really. I mean, most of our customers at Natobi that we we work for it tend to be large enterprises yeah. um, and working for their internal IT departments or software development teams. Um, but yeah, a lot of the community is, is also driven by startups like that, people who are working on their app uh, independently or small design yeah. shops. Um, we want everyone to be able to leverage their web and HTML skills. I think a lot of people um, do have the foresight to realize that web technologies are going to continue to evolve and stick around, and they're kind of uh, they're betting on that approach. So some people are able to overlook if you know there's small bugs in the frameworks right now. They're contributing patches and stuff like that, and then there's another camp of people who think that you know writing apps in whatever native Java or Objective C is the way of the future. I don't know why they think that, but um, obviously you know, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't believe that. I mean, there's a time and a place for them for sure, but there's some people who will just kind of prescribe uh, learning those technologies, um, kind of it, for any type of application. Yeah. yeah. So, so how, how do you? I mean, what what what's been the impact of of something like PhoneGap? Do you think, or what will be the impact um, when you look back a year from now or two years from now? Um, um, because Right now, you guys are a unique company in Natobi because you're you're not pushing people to spend, you know, twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars on an app. You're saying go to go to uh, you know build a mobile web space first, and then see if that does anything, and then and then leverage that code into uh, into PhoneGap to deploy across uh, multiple handsets if if that's necessary. Um, so you're you're taking money out of somebody else's pocket by doing this, which is a good thing because. You know, adoption of this has to happen. Do you think that? What do you think the impact is going to be of what you guys are doing here? I mean, hopefully, the impact ultimately is that people, like end users, actually don't have to worry about what phone they buy. They can just get apps for it, and it's the same app on all the platforms or equal kind of user experience. Right? It's not like, oh, hey, Phil, check out this new app, and Phil's like, oh, Andre, you're on an Android, and I'm on a BlackBerry, so obviously we can't use the same app. Yeah. Um, and for developers. Hopefully that we're successful in really um, abstracting that from them and they can just call the APIs and they can be relatively sure that all their HTML and JavaScript and display issues are going to be um, really easy to port across the different platforms um, so that people don't have to choose. Uh, that's one of the big things right now is people are kind of stuck in this position where they're forced to choose which platform they want to go on. And, yeah. That's so tricky, right? Because, you know, let's say you chose, we're only going to be on iPhone a year ago. Um, today, you're probably sitting there thinking, crap, I wish we had also started on our Android and been one of the first to market there. And you're probably going to feel the same way again, you know, when HP releases a bajillion devices that are just everywhere based on Palm Web OS now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's just... Or Microsoft with the new Windows Phone. Yep. Yeah. Who, who knows? And if you if you picked an approach that um, safeguarded you at least a little bit early on, you'd probably be a happier camper. Um, I just, it's hard to imagine, you know, let's say like three or four years down the road, someone being really happy that they built five different native applications yeah. and put together five different teams to basically create an app that reads and writes some web services. <laughs> so true. Right? Is, I don't know, you're going to think that was a pretty silly decision. So, so. Uh, how, are you, how are you guys, uh, uh, so what's been the impact on Natobi, um, the, the, the for-profit company that you, that you actually run? Has it been... Uh, because of the awareness of phone gap, has that helped you guys? Oh yeah, immensely. I mean, we another reason we started on phone gap is because we wanted to get in the mobile space a few years ago. Yeah. It's probably three or four years ago. We're like, okay, well, mobile. Um, 